All right, let's talk about how to do a basic find and replace using string methods in JavaScript. So I have an HTML file here. I've got a single paragraph. I've given it a class name, so I'm easy, able to target it. Uh, just a bunch of text. I've thrown the word Apple in a whole bunch of times inside of here just to give me something to actually find and replace instead of having a whole bunch of unique text. I have two input fields one with the ID find, one with the ID replace, and a button. So in my script, just to get everything started, I'm doing the DOM content loaded event listener, waiting for that to happen. Once the page has finished loading, then it's going to run this function. I'm going to find my button, which is this one right here, the go button. And when the person clicks on this, I'm going to call the function do find and replace right here. And this I've added here, this prevent default, this method being called on the event, which is the click event being passed from this method right here, the add event listener, the click listener is attached to this. So the click event gets passed down into this function and I'm saying prevent default because when you're inside of a form, if you add a single button inside of a form, this can make the form actually submit. So we're saying don't do your default behavior. Don't do what you would normally do. Don't try to submit the web form as if you would were there no JavaScript on the page. We want to do our own thing. So I always add this inside of any function that I'm adding to a button just in case that button has been placed inside of a form. There's input type equals button, input type equals submit, there's buttons themselves. We want to be very certain that regardless of the type of button that this is put on or where it's placed, if it's placed inside of a form, we don't want to send the page somewhere else. We want to stay on this page. So we always add that at the start of the function. Now, to do a find and replace, we need a couple of things. We need the text that the person put inside the find field. We need the text that the person put in the replace field. So let's target those two things and get the value out of them. So document get element by ID. First one's called find. That is this input field. And if you want the value of what the person has typed inside of here, it's simply the value property. I need to put this into a variable. So I'm going to have the contents of this in a variable and the contents of this in a variable. Let's just call it find and we'll call the other one replace. There we are. Okay, we have the find, we've got the replace. The person has clicked the go button, that's triggering this function. I've got these two values. Now I need to get the paragraph where I want to do this find and replace. So let's just put it in a variable called p for paragraph. Document. Uh, we can't do get element by ID because this paragraph doesn't have an ID. We'll have to use query selector. And target is the name of that. Now, paragraphs don't have a value property. If you want the actual text that's inside of here, all this text right here, it's the text content property of the paragraph. We don't want inner HTML. The reason we don't want inner HTML is if I were to do something like this. So I add a piece of HTML inside there. I don't want that. I want the just the text part of this. I don't want the uh, the HTML. So I'm going to oops get rid of that. I don't need it. I just want the text itself, not the HTML that's inside of there. So let's go to the paragraph and get the text content. There we are. Now there is a string method called replace. Simple enough, we can do that. We can say, um, well actually we don't even need to put this in a variable. Let's just do this straight out. We'll say p.textContent replace. Now text content, this is the actual text, so it is a string. 
all of this is a string, replace is a string method. It takes two arguments. The first one is, what do you want to find? So this is what you're looking for, and this is what you want to replace it with. So I'll save it, come inside here, and I better refresh this page to make sure we've got the code. We're going to find apple and replace it with orange. Go. Okay, so nothing happened. Why is that? Well, nothing wrong with this code. If I come in here and I inspect the page and I go to the console, there are no errors. There's nothing that was done that was wrong. But what's happening here is p.text content replace. It's taking a copy of this text, it's replacing it, it's finding this and replacing it with that, and then it wants to give us back the result. We haven't told it where to put that result. So we need to update this. So we'll say p.text content equals that. Save. Now we're taking the result of this and actually putting it in there. So now we're going to update the one that's on the page. Again, we'll refresh. Come in here, we'll pick apple, we'll pick orange. Go. Okay, yep. That one was replaced, but hey, I still have a whole bunch of apples. And that's because the replace function only replaces the first instance of whatever it is that you're looking for. It doesn't say, I'm going to go and replace 10 of them, or 20 of them, or 30 of them. It just replaces the first one it finds. So I don't want to do this. I don't want to create a for loop around this and say, search 500 times just on the off chance that there's 500 of these things in there because that's just a waste. Instead of that, I'm going to use a while loop. I want to keep searching. So I'm going to test to see if this thing that I've typed here, if this still exists somewhere inside of here, I will continue to do the replaces. So p.text content, that's my string. And there's another method called index of. Index of allows you to search inside of one string for something else. Well, find is the thing that I'm looking for. Index of will give you back an integer. It can be minus one, meaning it didn't find anything, or it will be zero or higher what it's returning is the position inside this string. So right here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This position 6, this would have been the first thing that it came back with. It is the sixth position inside this string. That's what index of gives me. So as long as it's not negative 1, I know that I found the word apple. So I'll put does not equal negative 1. So I want to keep checking here. I'm going to keep looking for this over and over and over again. As long as it's not negative 1, then I'm going to do the replace. As soon as it is negative 1, this loop will stop. So let's refresh. We'll come in here one more time. Apple, orange, and there we are. Now we have replaced all the apples with oranges. One last thing to mention here is that this is a case-sensitive search. If I was to refresh this page and I said search for Apple with a capital A, this would not match. This is a case sensitive thing. So that doesn't replace anything. If I come in and I replace, let's say, the second one with a capital A, and I do the, this will be the one that gets replaced here. There we are. So it is a case-sensitive search. If you don't want to do a case-sensitive search, then we need to get into regular expressions. But that's a whole other video onto itself. So I'll do another video on that uh, in the future. Okay, so I hope that helps you out. Hope you understand uh, a little bit about how these string methods work and how they return a value to you. And you have to make sure that you're working with the return value. Um, that's it. If you have any questions, leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching.